Hi, I'm Basil Muhammad Ghazi Abdullah Kittani from Naples, Palestine. I'm a former prisoner for 15 years in the Israeli incubation jails, and this is my story. Okay. When I was young, I tried to be a member of Hamas, but they told me, no, you cannot be a member of Hamas because you are still young. After a while, I find that, yes, if you are a member of Hamas, the people will love you here because you are helping them, and they trust you, and they will know, and they know when they need anything, they will find you there. After that, when I reached 18 years old, and it was the second intifada, the high level of, a, of Hamas, the military side of Hamas, chose me to be a member of Kata'ab al-Shaheed al din Qassam, the military side of Hamas, and they invited me for a, for a meeting, and they asked me if I agreed to be one of them, if I agreed to take this responsibility on my shoulders, and they said, yes, I want to do that. I want to, re to resist the Israeli occupation by, by weapon. And at that day, my life changed. I became more trust in myself because now I am doing something more dangerous. I need to be more, uh, I have to be more strong. I have to be more intelligent. I have to be... The, that one who is close for himself before, after that, with the people. By the way, before the Second Intifada, I used to be a member of the Palestinian Taekwondo team. So when they picked me to be a member of a military side of Hamas, they knew that I, uh, I have the good situation in my family. I'm not the only child for this family. I am in the middle. Um, I have the good mentality. I have the good... Uh, skills, I have the, the good uh, body, strong uh, shape, so because of, of all those conditions, they asked me if I accept to be a member of the military side of Hamas, and I did. How do you feel about the misconceptions and the representation of Hamas as a terrorist organization in Western media? Fake news. <laughs> Sorry for that, but <laughs> we knew that from Trump. <laughs> when you are look from outside to the Palestinian situations, you can hear about that, that Hamas is a terrorist, terrorism organization. But if you lived inside here, if you try to feel the, the connections with the people, you can find, you, and you can feel that it's another terrorist. It's a freedom movement. It's a freedom party. Now I am not a member of Hamas. I stopped that membership since I came back from, a, from the prison. But I can't talk about them because I used to be a member with them for more than 20 years. Hamas party, it's a social party here. It's a religious party here. It's a community party. They are doing what people want without to ask from them. Because of that, the people here love them. Like what we had in 2006. If we have a free elections here now in the, in the West Bank, Hamas will want that elections, but in one condition, free elections. Tell us what it was like living under Israeli occupation. How was your family affected by this occupation? All the time we, was feeling, we were feeling that there is something wrong with the other side, with the occupation. We're still not living in peace in this area. When we reached the second intifada, at the beginning it was so so strong. Uh, I remember that I was on the high school at that time and I was starting to be a fighter 
against the Israeli occupation. And in 2002, I used to be a member of the Palestinian resistance underground fighters. I fight the Israeli soldiers here in, in, in Nablus. I tried to make the life easy for the people by targeting the Israeli soldiers who was surrounding Nablus during the siege. To help the people how to get out and get inside Nablus during this siege. I, I did that for several times under, under my covered dispose. When my covered dispose, they arrested me and they put me in the, military, in the jail. The military court judged me for 15 years in the prison. My journey in the prison started the 13th of July, 2003. At those days, I was learning electrical engineering in the Najah University. Uh, the army came for my house. They took me from there. It was um, easy. They, they respect my family. They took me by uh, easy way. Not um, It wasn't like the, them usual. I, I found after that they, they taped everything. They taped the operation and they, they documented it. And they tried to show that they are doing good way of relationships with the terror people. Tell us about your trial. Was there a fair trial? And what was life like in prison for 15 years? Yes, I got a trial, but we never can say that it was a fair trial. <laughs> First of all, it's, a, it's by the military, or military law. Who is trialing me? The occupation. I resist the occupation. So they at least arrested me. Why are you arresting me? You are occupation, occupied, occupied my, my land, I resist it. I'm a freedom fighter. But, yeah, you are allowed to use a lawyer. You are allowed to, use, to, uh, to discuss what, what they are accusing, uh, uh, excusing you for of. But it will never be a free or a fair trial. At the first day, I knew that I'm going to spend a long while in the prison, so I had to take a decision. I took two. The first one was to leave my head outside of the prison, to find any way that I can be or keep myself in touch with the outside of the prison, to keep my mentality good, to keep my moral high. The second decision was to continue my learning. Both of them I did. Both of them stayed with me until the last day in the prison. The conditions there were uh, not bad conditions, not because they are good people. They are the occupation, don't forget that. But because we are the prisoners, we are strong people. We are organized people. We are, have a good morale. We are fighters. We are freedom fighters. We are proud to be one like that. So we are together. We were no, knew how to, go, how to get our rights. There are several ways to get our rights there in the prison. The right to uh, cook our food, the right to learn in the university, which is, was allowed, but now it's not the right to visit our families, the right to watch TV, the right to have transistor radio, the right to have a, a long hours in the yard in the prison, the right to organize our life. All of those, we took them by our force, by our methods, which is started by the logic, the, 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 the uh, legitimate way, we asked by some books and or to go to the court to, to ask our uh, rights until we reach the high level by uh, hungry strikes or the extremely ways which is to cut some guards. And we did. Talk about the hunger strike. What okay. was the purpose of the hunger strike and was the goal achieved? The hunger strike is not a simple thing. We knew that it will be Difficult. We knew that it would be um, contain some dangers, but we had to do because they refused to give our what we asked for. So uh, the operation started by ask the uh, the jailman's 
to, to do something to make our life more easy in the prison. One after one, day after day, they refuse to, and we are the prisoners, giving them deadline. We are going to do a hungry strike if you are not respond for our requests. And they did. It depends on the political situations outside of the prison. Because the Second Intifada stopped in 2005, 2006, the, the conditions started to be better in the prison. But after that, it started to be bad because what's happening in Gaza and the high, the, the, the high level of resistance which started to be in Gaza in, two, in 2008, 2009, 2010, especially with Hamas. I used to be um, um, uh, prisoners by the party of Hamas, so the Israeli government started to push on the prisoners of Hamas. The style of life in the prison started to be more difficult because of that. They couldn't make anything with Hamas in Gaza, so they started to punish the prisoners of Hamas in the prison to push on Hamas outside of the prison. Because of that, the prisoners of Hamas decided to make another, another collective hungry strike in 2012. And it continued until eight, 28 days. It was a successful hungry strike. Yes, it continued for 28 days. It was difficult, it was strong, it was so dangerous those days, but at the last day, we felt happy because we did and we took whatever we, everything we asked at that hunger strike. We asked for three main things. One of them, to end the isolation for more than uh, 20 prisoners at that time. The second one was to allow the people, uh, the, to allow the family from Gaza to visit, to visit them, them sons in the prison, and we took it. The third one was to make the conditions better by several uh, requests, and also we took that. What kept you alive every day? Mm. And how did you not lose faith? Or did you lose faith? No, I never lose faith, because I, first of all, I'm Muslim. Because I'm Muslim, I, I believe that the life is a good thing and I need to be happy in this life. By that, uh, I, st I kept myself uh, with a high morale and all the time I was working there. I was studying and working. Working by cook for the prisoners, working by helping them, working by uh, be the speaker of the prisoners because I know the Hebrew language, I learned the Hebrew language, so I know the law there. I was uh, working like the speaker for the prisoners for a long while. So by those uh, tools, I kept myself happy all the time. What day did you get out of prison? Talk about your two birthdays. How did it feel mm. to be released? Yes, I have two birthdays. One of them when my mother bought me. It was 14th of December 1983. And the second one, which I felt more, in the 29th of July 2018. This day, which I celebrated my birthday because <laughs> I came back again for the life. I came back again, a human being. At that day, when the soldiers released me, like me again, I flied. I wasn't walking on the floor. I was running without to feel where I go, where I go. Like, it's the freedom, freedom again. I ran, I ran to face my family again. I hugged my brother, Abed, which I met in the prison once. I met my brothers, my mother, my, ha my father, my family, yes. It was my, really, my real birthday again, yeah. I will never forget that. How did prison change you as a person? What was your, hmm. what was your purpose after prison? When I fought the, the incubation, yeah, I knew that I am doing the right thing, but... In the prison, it makes myself more trust by my identity. 
the prison make me feel that I have the duty, the duty to be an active one for the future. There I studied the history. Look, there I felt that, yeah, the life, it's a jungle, a huge jungle. And in the jungle, you can face everything. You know, you know the monsters, the, the dark ways, the, the difficult, the good ways, everything you can face in the jungle. And the prison was like a high cliff, which is on this jungle. All the difficulties by climbing this cliff I faced during my time in the prison until I reached the peak of this cliff. From there, I felt peaceful. I felt comfortable. Because from there, I saw the jungle from above, and I saw all the ways in the, inside the, the jungle where it leads. And I picked mine, which is, needs me for the happy end. Here I came back to the jungle, but I came back while I, am know, uh, while I know where to put my legs. I know my path. What inspired you to start Turquoise Hospital in Cafe? To make this project, it wasn't my own idea. It was my brother, Dr. Abdurrahman, and his wife, Dr. Alessandra Gola. Both, both of them has PhD in architecture. It was them plan how to bring the life again for the old city of Naples, which destroyed in the Second Tifada and also before that. And also I studied history. And the history that I studied, I, I make research about the old city of Naples, the old city which, the old city which I born in. So together we decided to make a lab project. At the beginning, we, we knew that we have to find a place where we can start to, uh, to put the life back again, to bring the life back again for it. And from here we started, we make the coffee shop, which make, the, which make us keep in touch with the youngs here. After that, the hostel, which is making make us in touch with the internationals. By that, we started the life again for those places. It was an idea, it was a dream, and we did it, we, we reached it. How do you imagine Turquoise five years from now and the role it will play in Nablus and the community here? I'm not just imagine, I know that Turquoise will be, not Turquoise, the Yellow Project, which Turquoise is a part of it, will lead the cultural and the social life in the old city of Nablus. Our plan is going for that, and I think it's less than five years we will be there because we are honest people, and we are believe of what we are doing. There is another thing, and it's a main thing for us. Everything, every single thing we are doing here, we are doing it with a message, and it's a good, it's a good message. So when we are doing that, the people will take it and continue it. If you are doing anything with a message, the message will go with you. So I know that within five years, we will be leading the cultural, the social life in the old city of Nablus. What do you hope to see in the future for Palestine? <sighs> this area will not face any peace. It was like that since the first day. We are talking about a thousand of years. This area staying under conflict. I'm sorry to say that, but I believe in that. But my duty is to pass this message for the youngs here with a hope that you can live under these conditions with the good vibes. You can do something good. You can make yourself, your life in, in, a, in the best way. I did it while I was in the prison for 15 years and I felt happy there. And here I am, um, I came back, I am living here and I have the passion to stay here. And also, I have some conditions, I have some borders. I cannot go even to Jordan, the, the closest, State, state here, 
But for me, it's not matter. I have my, state, my city here, I have my people, I have my community, so I can do a huge things in this small area. What would you say to people in Western countries, such as the US, who would, con who would consider you a terrorist for fighting for your country? Go after the truth. And when you find it, you will find that I'm not a terrorist. I'm not, I'm not a terrorist when I was like that. Just please go after the truth. Don't listen for one side. Listen for everyone and bear your, your own comparing between the stories that you are listening. After that, you will find that I am the victim. I am the victim who defends himself. So I'm not a terrorist. I will never like to hurt anyone. The opposite. <laughs> I love everyone. But who trying to hurt me, I will not be a kind one with him. What keeps you alive today? My wife. It's easy to know. Look, I came back. After a few months, I started my way with her. It was a, a traditional way when we met. We started to know each other. And after a, small time, a short time, we get married. And I faced the most beautiful, intelligent, a good person in my life. She's my wife. Every day I, I continue life with her. I feel, I, I, I feel that God sent her to me to make my life better. And every day, every single day, I woke up and I can open the door. I felt happy because here I am, I came back again for life, I can't walk alone, I can't make my decision where I go, where I, cannot, where I want, don't want go, to go. Every day that I came here to my work, and I faced people, I saw them, and they thanked me, Basel, thank you because you find this good place that we can enjoy. I'm feeling good. I knew that I am continuing making good for my community. Because of that, I'm feeling happy every day. That's it. That's it. Look, I'm proud. You're proud? I'm proud, yeah. Because, you see, most of those people who are visiting us here, they will never get in the old city if we are not here. If you were not here? Yeah. yeah. So, you get some. We are bringing another type, another type of people here. At the beginning, we brought everyone. But everyone now is not enough for me.